who here has heard of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution? You've heard of it. The First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. What is it? Freedom of speech. Freedom of the press. Anything else in there? Freedom of religion. The press is not free if what the press produces cannot be freely distributed. If you're on the sidewalk, you can say, I have the right to sell a newspaper on the sidewalk. The freedom of the press, First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, gives me the right to sell this newspaper out here on the sidewalk. We have been planning on leveling out this whole year. We keep thinking we're going to reach our number, we're going to reach our number, and we're going to know, you know from now on how many to order per month, and we're just still not there. When newspapers are struggling to keep paying customers, so-called street papers are exploding. Street papers benefit the homeless, who sell them as an alternative to panhandling. Around the country, many are growing by double digits. Publications in Nashville and Los Angeles have quadrupled in size over the last year and helped dozens of people make enough money to get housing. This is a homeless paper here in Nashville. Most cities have a homeless paper, and it's just a dollar. It talks about diverse issues about the homeless. Yes. They're really, have you read them? They're great papers. I buy it for a quarter, and I sell it for a dollar, and then the profits benefit the vendors. I was aware of street papers through other cities I visited. I swear, I think I got one in Atlanta when I was there once. And I remember thinking, someone should start a street paper in Nashville. You know, can Nashville sustain a paper? What would we call it? What is our, you know, what's our mission? What are the guidelines? I realized that starting a street paper is radical, but I'm not so radical that I was gonna re reinvent the wheel in areas I didn't have to. And so NASNA and especially Street Sense at the time helped me with that. Tentative layout is Lindsay's article lead, Jeannie's article second on there, maybe even throwing Jimmy Wayne on there little yeah. um, if we want to do three. Okay, Crinks inundated with homelessness, yeah, really good. Um, or inundated with vagrants, yeah. Jimmy Wayne, Abbott, um, I like it. I think it's, it's what the article deserves. Basically on poetry, I don't want to do more than two pages. Chris Scott's are some of my least favorite. Do you believe you kind of told him we were going to run all three this month? They're yeah, long I think too. so. Okay. I said this time, you know, it's fine. He asked for a set type of thing. I said that's fine. Well, thank you guys. Okay, hello, how you doing? If you're here to train, you need to come in now. If you're not here to train, you need to get out of the way. Uh, I realize that some of you didn't get the best night's sleep <laughs> last night, so uh, that's okay with me. But I, but I still will probably try to get your attention at some point. Uh, if if you look like you're you're down for the count or or something like that, you're all here to train to be vendors of the contributor newspaper. And Tom is our full-time director of vending. He's full-time volunteer, and he, for whatever reason, was one of the first people I pulled in in those initial meetings. I did not know Tom. We weren't friends at the time, just friendly acquaintances. And um, so I told him what a street paper was about and asked him, you know, is this something? I we I didn't have any plans for him, and it. I just kind of wanted his advice, and, and so we, he helped me get into the studio space, and within that, I think it was within that same month we were putting the, starting to put the first issue of the paper together. It was right before Thanksgiving of 2007. Uh, street newspaper is a type of newspaper that is sold uh, by people who've experienced homelessness and poverty. It's sold exclusively by, the, by that class of person. That's why I asked the question, when's the last time you were homeless, and when you say, Actually, I've never been homeless. I just want to get. I just want to earn some money. Uh, that that doesn't really that doesn't really work with what we do. When we started the paper, the places I thought we were going to have trouble were financially and content. Financially, it was more doable than we thought because it was out of pocket at first, um, and content kind of fell on us. You know, both of those places were taken care of. We struggled with our vendor force for a year and a half. We would have about thirty vendors off and on. 10 of those, we would see more than once. 
and then maybe two dedicated people selling. From California, yeah. born and raised. We were born in the same hospital in the same town, mm -hmm. one year apart. Mm -hmm. She's older. <laughs> I think there was, what, six of us? And the yeah. paper was printing 1500 a month. And they'd have mm -hmm. a thousand of them left. Jerry is wonderful. Um, at the beginning, though, I could not stand it. I found out there was a church downtown that fed a breakfast. And I'd seen a girl sitting on the corner with this paper. And she sort of like had it laying beside her. I made a comment to my wife. I said, man, if I was selling something, I think I'd do better than that. He decided... I'm going to make this my own, you know, I'm going to make this damn paper work for me if it kills me. And she says, why don't you go in there and get trained, you do it any way you want. And it sort of blew my mind. I thought, look, if she can sell any of these, I know I can. I remember pretty quickly they got to about 400 papers a month, which was huge for us. It was early August of 2009. It was so different. It was either 51 or 53 vendors we had then. It was brutal. I suffered and struggled. At first, we used them for pillows. I mean, these might <laughs> good pillows if you stack up 15 of them, put them behind your head. The two things I want to know, how long it's been since you've been homeless, and one thing you know about the contributor. My name is Mark Anthony Napoleon Gunter. Uh, I, I knew about the paper and what it was about. Mm -hmm. um, and like the man says, it's kind of legal panhandling. We are not panhandlers. You do not ask for tips. They're giving you money. They're not making a donation to anybody. A donation is something you can write off in your taxes, okay? You're not representing a nonprofit. You are a for-profit organization. Uh, you're not, there's no such thing as a donation to you. There's only tips, and you can't ask for tips. The paper caught fire. I mean, he started training, you know, people, so many people. Then I met my roommate. He got me into selling these papers. He said, you know, you can sell these papers. And I thought, ah, man, I can't stand out there and sell the papers. And I'd never been on the street, you know. I'd never been on the street, so I didn't know. I felt embarrassed, you know, standing out there holding a sign that says homeless paper and kind of scared at first. But once I got knowing the ropes, you know, it, I mean, you just got to watch who you mess with. Number one, I will not sell the contributor under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. While vending, I agree not to sell any other goods, services, or products. I agree to stay off of private property without permission. We got together, he had told me that he had a light bill due, and if he didn't get it paid by that Friday, 50 bucks by that Friday to the uh, NES, he was going to lose his MDHA contract for housing. And I told him, I said, shoot, I can make that in no time, selling paper. He went out there with me, he watched me sell papers. He marched to me, made that $50 in, what, two hours? Yeah. And I handed it to him, I said, now go pay your bill. Which you did. And I told him, I says, I ain't doing this by myself. Your ass can go get a badge and sell the papers too. And he did. He come that Tuesday. If you aren't going to do this right, I will make it clear that you're, that, that, that you're suspended. And if you, can't, if you can't handle, you know, taking time off and going back through training and doing it right after that, then I don't really want you selling this paper. The top vendors, mo almost all of them, sell to cars away from downtown. They do not sell to pedestrians on the sidewalk. Like first, my first permanent uh, territory was uh, Fifth and Broadway. That didn't turn out too well. Too much foot traffic, not enough cars. So I moved down to 20th and got pushed out of that spot. When I found this spot, it was just like God given, like, yay. And now I recognize every car just about that comes up and down the street after seven months of working it. The map badge is for people who sold 300 of one issue. I did not have a regular spot. I was like the, the rogue nomad uh, floater vendor. When the couple who worked this territory left to go back home to Louisiana, they were Hurricane Katrina victims. I knew that if I, it was now or never, so I made the conscious decision to buy 300 papers that month so that I could put in for this spot. The people who, who find a spot and stick to it and get a map and work that are the ones that are in, staying in hotel rooms instead of sleeping in camps. They're the ones that are, um, that are in subsistence housing. Okay, in his first vendor trainings, he would, t as part of vendor training, he would tell people, you're not gonna get off the street selling this paper. We went from that bush to buying a tent, to going to a hotel room, to a sleeping room, to an apartment, 
and to this house. Our top vendor sells over 1500 a month. You can get off the street selling this paper, you know, at the beginning now. The paper is doing very well. It's for the greater good. The, pa the paper has just skyrocketed. We became something they knew. Our picture with our article was in every paper. We want to put faces to the issue of homelessness. We want people to look at you and you and you and you. We wrote our story, we lived our story, and we were out there every day from 5 in the morning till 10, 11 o'clock at night. We'd walk downtown, we'd sell our papers, we'd walk back, either our campsite, motel room, whatever the case being for that time. This whole trail was carved out with a, a saw and a pair of clippers, hedge trimmers. And I carved it out and I made it up this hill and I made home. I created a residence. <sighs> no. I don't think I will ever make, be able to sell enough papers to get an apartment. No, the only way I'm going to get an apartment is to make it as a songwriter, and that's what the paper is enabling me to do. The paper is nothing more than a tool for me to survive until I do what I want to do, which is to be discovered for the, um, my songwriting ability and my, write, my ability to write poems and, and lyrics as well as I do. In a day, sometimes I sell as many as 15, 20, 25, or sometimes as little as five. I was out there one day for four hours and made seven dollars. After four hours, wrote a great song though. This is a great thing. I am able to work. I'm employed selling this paper. This employs me. Those are the stories you need to be telling people when they're saying, no, no, you can't. You need to say, not only I can, but you need to say, and it's a good thing that I can. Like, I lived a year in Nashville homeless, you know, before I, I mean, while I was trying to get up on my feet, and this, this paper's helped bring me out of that. By selling this paper, I just got me and my girl off the streets, and we're getting married next month, so. Man, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah man, really so, cool. I mean, like, just, just through selling this alone, I'm able to take care of us, you know, which that's is, awesome, yeah, yeah it's, it's terrific. Dream with me a little bit here. All right, everybody close your eyes. All right, I want you to imagine yourself with a bundle of papers. You're gonna walk uh, towards the bus station. You're gonna get on a bus, and you're gonna head out of downtown. And you're gonna find a, uh, a neighborhood, an area that has a lot of business going on, a lot of people on the sidewalks, maybe, maybe a lot of people driving in and out of, of different businesses. You put your sign on, you put your badge on, and you hold your paper up. And the first 10 cars that go by, they sort of ignore you. And then someone buys a paper for a dollar. And you say, thank you. Then 10 more cars go by and someone buys a paper and they give you a five. That's pretty nice. You say, thank you so much. And slowly people start buying this paper. It doesn't go great, but it goes enough to get you that bus pass back and forth and to buy a few more papers. The next day you go back to the same spot. You keep going to that same spot and people start to roll in the window, down their window and say, I bought one yesterday, but I, but I really appreciate what you're doing. They get to know you. They get to know your name. I've been waiting for you I go to Starbucks summer. all the time and I never see And I anyone. keep saying, I wonder where Elon is. I wonder know. where I've this been thinking about my number. You. Okay. You're back at Vanderbilt? Um, no, I'm, I'm not in school actually. I'll be in LA for a little bit. And I'm Got a bunch of stuff going on. You're going to Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, oh my well, God. Go really with you. Nervous, That's I'm my excited. home. <laughs> I grew up in California, so it was kind of a, I don't know, it was at the end of the, it was around the tail end of the Vietnam War. Things were a whole lot different. Peace, love, and rock and roll, and. I left in 96, and I'm a little homesick sometimes. I miss the ocean. I understand, oh yeah. I just want you to know, like, I think the world of you, and I've been looking for you everywhere. Next summer, call me. She said, I'll be back in August and I'm looking for you. But she, I expected her like a week ago. You make, some, you make friends out here, it's wonderful. Here is 15 papers and your sign. They get 15 free papers um, and a badge and a sign and, and they go out and sell those for a dollar plus tips and that's all their money to keep. I'm gonna turn this into a business and work like it's supposed to be worked. If you get out here and bust your butt, and find you a good spot, 
be kind and courteous and, and, and polite and use your vocabulary, not your ignorance. There's no reason you shouldn't get off the street. Our office hours are on the door. Tomorrow's an odd day. We have a, we have a, a, a meeting mm -hmm. after the Wednesday lunch at the church, but we're not open in the office until after that meeting is over. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. meeting tomorrow. All right, guys, I, I, I don't have a microphone, so we're just going to have to yell. We sold 47,000 copies of this edition this month. We've got five Wednesdays in the month of September. You're going to have an extra week to sell this paper. Um, the way that we're going to release the paper is the way that we've been doing it the last couple of, of, of months, but rather than passing out a little slip of paper with a number on it for everybody, we're just going to pass out the, the list. If you are on that list, you're going to get in, in line and order of the, of the persons that are on that list. And don't impersonate Jason Howard. He's number one. Uh, we know who Jason is. And if somebody else is in the front of the line, that's not going to work. 48, number 48. Still within the 50 mark. Not bad. Me and Jesse Hayes tied up. Look at all these people. They sell so much more than me. What a riot. It's going to be a great issue, though. Great issue, three of my ballsiest things I've ever read. Oh, September's looking good. Okay, one at a time. 70 free ones, huh? I mean, this is it? This is 70? Yes, sir. There's like four or five different labor halls that I was going to. I'd show up every morning at five o'clock with expectations of getting sent out and never did. I couldn't find no, um, no, no money to get me out of Nashville. And then I started selling the paper and having a great time, just decided to stay. How many? 40. You're buying 40. Yes. Okay, so you get 50 total. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It'll be a hectic afternoon. Um, it's a normal, normal first. Yeah, I know. Right now? First of the month for us. Yeah, I see. I head out about 6 o'clock in the morning and get back about 7 at night. The first month, I'd already sold enough to where I could map my spot off. So I started out, I was making, you know, 40, 50 bucks a day. and. Like last week, there wasn't a day I didn't make over 100. Okay, then went 103 plus the 10 for free, so. The 20 and the 15 for free. All right, this is James Meeks. 138. And Vicki Shellman. I came here in November from uh, South Carolina, and when I lived in South Carolina, I lived with friends. When I came here, I stayed at the mission for eight days, and then I lived in Tent City. I was probably making like $30 a day selling papers because I really didn't have patience with it. I'm kind of still down. It's the ramblings of a meth head about the manufacturing of crystal meth. Really? That, just, just from here to here? That is a poem about the manufacturing. Uh, they didn't know what they were writing. I mean, they didn't know what they were printing yet. That should or they not don't... have made it. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, it did. So, I mean, like, it's not, it, nobody's perfect. You know what I mean? Nobody's perfect. You know what? When I'm all right with it. That, I'm all right, you know, I'm ashamed of it. It's been out three days, and I'm already at like 360. I stay out there until I meet my quota every day. If I'm having a rough day, it's just going to be a longer day. Sooner or later, I will take the top spot, top vendor. It'll take me a while, but I, I think I can do it. When they had the newspaper here in Nashville called the Nashville Banner, I sold newspapers for the banner, and I was a street hawk. That's what they called them. When I was homeless, I, I, I sold roasted peanuts. I, I sold them in small bags and large bags, and I got paid in a commission. 15 newspapers yesterday. It took me two and a half to um, three hours to sell all 15. Right now, I got 50 newspapers. I have no idea how long it'll take me. The article, in the paper it says inundated with vagrants. This is issue number 30 for September 2010. It says uh, um, diverse perspectives on homelessness. Diverse perspectives on homelessness being anybody can write for the paper. If you're homeless or formerly homeless, you can write on anything. We decided that on those first meetings. But if you've never been homeless, you need to write on issues surrounding homelessness and poverty. Um, genuine opportunities for advancement was financial. Um, and with written skills, things like that. You have the opportunity to be published and you have the opportunity to create an income, however modest, off the sale of this paper. They won't allow 
a homeless population to catch up with the rest of or some you know there's different yeah, options but what I've thought about using is my main character is someone who's homeless who just became homeless because of a loss of job and I thought I'd try to like maybe let him travel through one of his days mm, that's a great idea yeah as he gets up at his camp and by the end you're giving very specific details we've been introduced to the character all the way and we're giving more descriptive painting the picture of scenes. Right, yeah, I never later. thought of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Right, try to put in a poem or an article or something into each paper so that I know I'm contributing by selling, but also contributing by adding my voice. I've written for the paper, I've been published 28 times. Um, I'm shooting for 100. When I get published 100 times, I want to publish a book called Lessons Learned from 100 Unsung Songs. I had so much positive feedback from a middle class mystique article. Even right. more people emailed me than the, the uh, identity crisis article. And I didn't realize until I got one email that it had been picked up by the Seattle Street paper. I mean, I right. don't know when these things Yeah, we forgot to tell you that. We, there's a thing, the Street News Service. Tasha and I made the decision of what from our paper we want to submit to them. And they can oh, accept really? it or reject it and put it on their online website or not. And they did pick up. I'm sorry really? that I didn't tell you I that. I didn't know that I should have it was told on you Street that. News Service. So the whole... Every street paper in the country has the option of, so apparently yeah. one did, at least one, Seattle. NASNA was really good for getting me connected with other street papers in the country. That was the most amazing part, I think, to be able to talk with other people who have done this much longer than we have. When you start something, especially if other people have done what you're doing, we look to them. I was looking to other street papers to see where this could potentially go. and. Um, and we are far beyond what we ever thought we'd ever see in the life of the paper. Contributor meeting is starting now, so if I can have your attention, turn our cell phones off. We are going to be closed on Monday for Labor Day. It's a holiday. You will see on your, uh, on your list that we have sold 19,202 papers in a week. 19,000, let me repeat that, 19,202 papers in a week. That's good. This is a five week month. Ever since we started the paper, we've always grown. I don't, I don't think we've had many months, if any, maybe in the beginning there were a couple that would dip. Our goal this month is to sell 80,000 copies. And we're almost a quarter of the way there, one fifth of the way through the month. We've got 87 papers per vendor being sold in the first week. That's up five papers per vendor. That's a good sign, I like that, that's healthy. Um, we also have 221 vendors were active this week. In the first week of last month, we had 178. That's 43 more vendors than we had last month active. Um, so uh, what does that mean? Spread out. For you, please. 40 papers? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. The magic number is 300. Right. What do I get? What do I get? The magic number is 300. Let you know now. All right. Here we go. It's back on lockdown. Well, I was there yesterday. I know. I took After yesterday. After five. Off. I took yesterday off. Believe me, I'm there when it's at the best time for the day. If I pass, I'll be starting class tomorrow. You, you can stay around for a little while, can't you? James is going to want me to study anatomy and physiology, uh, drawing blood, yeah. uh, pharmaceutical math, mm -hmm. so it contains all, right. all that. Yeah. yeah. Man, we're excited for you. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for me. I'm ready for something Been different. Long time coming, hasn't it? Shoot. I was yeah, one of the best uh, CNAs in my, uh, the nursing home I worked at had. All right, guys. All right, you take care. Well, I'm glad that black guy, Randy, he said, uh, I got that spot by Trinder Joe's. I went, okay. I guess I'll get another spot somewhere. Now, if, if Randy is not there at Trinder Joe's, I'm going to be there. Because the manager told me yesterday I can, I can be there. It's worth the trip. I guarantee you that. It is worth the trip. <laughs> I live in a house. I pay property tax. Property tax, I think, is $1,800 a year. Me and my wife own it. So uh, we're not married. Because if we were married, 
our disability income would decrease and we probably would lose the house. Trying to get off the street, man. There's no place to be. It's going to get winter time. I myself, I lost my job a couple years ago. And then I started having back problems and I had a surgery. They just took a tumor out of my back. So I started doing this. I'm waiting on disability. Thanks to VA, man, I ain't got to walk no more. This thing costs $4,000 if you buy it. I have a little trouble getting this on the bus, but God's with me. Here we go. Here you go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys have a nice day. You too. First kink worked out, then you'll be good. Yeah. Thanks, man. See you. are great. I appreciate it, Michael. Have a good one. He's not merely just a customer, he's a good friend. And he actually delivered me that bike this morning and I rode it downtown to get my papers. And when I got back, my front tire was flat. So I called him up and he came back to get the bike and uh, go fix the tire. Wheel here where the actual metal comes together. Yeah. It was like not perfectly seamed together. So he covered it up with a piece of rubber. Oh, okay. And then he said, if it does it again tonight, call me or in the morning. And then he said, we can just replace the wheel. If I get flat, then I'll just lock it up where I'm at and catch a bus yeah, I'll lock the rest of the way home. Area, Absolutely. And then call me and then I'll take it back. Because he said it'll, it'll cost more money, but he can replace the wheel too. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much, Mike. Have a good night. Catch you later, you too. Today's not my day. <laughs> Damn wind. Uh, in January of 1987, I went into the United States Navy, but I wasn't military material. I decided to be homeless back in 1989, literally on the street. I don't see Randy at all. Thank you very much, man. You have a good day. I hope you have a good week. Well, I don't know where he's at, to be honest with you. He probably made his money a lot. I he, made, he I made four or $5 bills from four different people. Yeah, they do it and like one that. person just gave me $5 for the hell of it. Yeah, they, they give you money just to give it to you. I know. That's just like I'm winning money from the casino. My wife and I was, uh, we went, uh, shopping yesterday at Trader Joe's. You got a lot of groceries. <laughs> 24 papers left. I had 40. You do the math. I can stand on that median and make a killer. But the popo ran me off. He might come back. It's that time of day. I would try it. Moved here in 1967. Went to, went to school here. Graduated in 79. Went to the Army, ended up being a plumber. And I did construction for almost almost 30 years. Then I got laid off two years, well, about two and a half years ago. I went to the old mission that we call it the House of Pain. It was one of the nastiest places. You could smell it three blocks away. I slept there one night, and I got me some blankets and stuff, and I went to Centennial Park because I can't handle the thievery and the drugs and the noise and... What's in your wallet, mister? Where you been? You weren't there yesterday, was you? Yeah. When did you come? Yeah, you, you didn't come up here. I come up here at 11 o'clock. I, I was going at 9 o'clock. I was in the uh, Army, you know, in 94 to 97. So. I drove a Patriot missile and set it up, got it ready to fire and program the radio and all that stuff, run the fiber optic. It was, well, it was good for me yesterday. But I had two weeks straight. Was... Well, we've been, we've been hitting this cor these corners hard and heavy. I come with 53. I think I got about 20 or something left. That's been a dead day. I was on Delatus, K4 Delatus, like a pain pill, an uh, opiate. It had, had me under control pretty bad. I lost everything over it. I'd done uh, 14 months, and then when I got out, I said, I was out for three weeks and I told my mom, I said, I'm going right back down the same road. I said, I gotta figure out something. She got on the internet, found a national rescue mission. So I, you know, come up here, tried to regroup. What I gave the paper was, was a three stars called Chris Scott Triple Shot. Okay, and it was three of my ballsiest works 
printed out in that format, a wonderful reading experience that y'all did not get. To You got the chopped up, massacred, this is yours, you yes you can. Yeah. Um, they said I can't live on the streets. They were right. I probably couldn't live on the streets, but I can learn to be a camper. That wasn't complicated. That's not rocket science. That's not brain surgery. <laughs> Radio, very important. Country music or old rock and roll, but mostly country. And this one is strictly for storage of my stuff. You notice the tape here? This is where I was robbed, and he sliced open my thing and said, give me all your money at knife point. I snitched it all up, and I double taped it with some duct tape. They say a bear shit in the woods. A bear shit in the woods? Yes, he does, but I'm not a bear, and I don't like shitting in the woods. Um, so what I created was three old used tires. This is an old air mattress that I cut up to make the ring and the cover for it. I've got a five gallon bucket in here with a lid that kind of comes off fairly easily. Okay, you just lift it straight up. Here, I gotta go about a half mile away to get my water supply. Got my towels, my soap, my toothbrush and toothpaste, and I just do the mountain man shower thing. It's a nice way to start the day. I'll tell you what, that cold shower, that definitely wakes you up. Well, he told me if, if you keep drinking, you're going to end up here time and time Yeah, again. and you'll be end up living here or on the street, yeah. Oh, That's drinking. why I wrote that story back in May, because oh. I wanted people to understand that not everyone out here is a drug addict or an alcoholic. Right. I right. mean, mine was a case of domestic violence, and I got the heck out of there before he beat me again. I left Fort Smith with a girlfriend, and... Uh, her husband and my boyfriend were friends, which was ironic. Both god awful, they were terrible alcoholics. And he beat me up pretty bad. And her and I drove and drove and drove for hours, and we ended up in Nashville. We stopped and asked for directions to the mission here. And on December 19th, I remember the exact date, she pulled up in the parking lot and said, I'm gonna have to leave you here, but here's my number. I went up to the mission and she drove away with my dog and my life, basically. And therefore, I, I didn't keep in contact with her because I didn't know to, where to tell her I was. I still don't know where to tell her I am. I grew up in Hammond, Indiana, which is like uh, 10 minutes from downtown area, from downtown Chicago in, in housing projects and just never really had a you know, ne never had anything on a plate handed to me, you know, I mean, um, everything I've ever had, I've had to, I've had to endure for or work for. Hey, how you doing? Great, me and, Miss, me and Melissa went to our premarital counseling Saturday. We're gonna get married in Bicentennial Park at the Amphitheater at 6.30, two Mondays from today. Please come, please come. Um, I really hope you make it with your family. Yeah, Fellow Hoosier, fellow Hoosier. Yeah. Yeah, so. Congratulations, that's I, very exciting. I hope you make it. Will do. Cool, thanks. See ya. Later. It's at the Bicentennial Park in the outdoor amphitheater. And um, I just hope, I hope you can make it because you're great. I've never even thought of marriage. <laughs> yep. Never thought I'm I'd married be. once. I guess I never met the right person until now because I mean, like, it, the thoughts never even crossed my mind. So. so many of my favorite customers are just like telling me that they're going to be at, my, at our wedding. Let me get this money, honey. I love you. How are you doing today? Okay, have have a blessed right. week. Okay. Thank you very much, and you have a blessed week, both of you. The most money I made in one day is um, um, $38. I know I made more than that. A job well done. Rewards are coming. This $10 bill right here gets um, 40 more papers. Put it in my secret compartment. God, I got a lot of money here. I don't know what to do with it. I might make enough money right now just to get me a Titan jersey or a Titan ticket. This is the first time I made this much money in I don't know how long. I've never made this kind of money. Never, never. Disability included. If 
five, ten, fifteen, seventy one, <laughs> seventy two, seventy three, eighty, eighty one, eighty two, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. Am I wearing money? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I want you hack. What's that term? Um, philanthropist. I can be like a temporary one. <laughs> How you doing, Ellie? I just figured I'd call you. You know, with some real good news, if you know what I mean. I don't know if you've started started cooking or not, but don't, cause um, I'm not gonna be hungry. Time to eat. You know what this came to? Ten dollars and fourteen cents. Told you I want to get me a big feast. I have arrived. Let me talk. Good morning, folks. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy the game. My brother, I got three songs in here signed in all three places, but they mutilated it. You got a handout in there. Hey, I've got three songs in here. I signed it in all three places. There's a handout in there. Very cool songs I wrote. You're going to love the handout. When I first left the mission, this was the original campsite. Um, you can see some people have probably been here once or twice since I've left. This whole place was tarped over. They had a huge tarp. And they had three tents, three or four tents scattered around. They always had the fire going. This point right here is notoriously known as Crack Rock, because the crackheads come here, grab themselves a little seat right here, and smoke on their crack pipes. And they would offer me, and I remember, I went through four years of that, and every penny I had, and getting thrown in jail twice, and being in jail during the holidays, when you should be home with your family and your kids because you got caught with a piece of crack rock. That's something that you can never change, but it's something you'll never forget. Crack is the most sinister evil drug on the face of the earth, and there are so many people trapped in it. It's one of the hardest things to overcome. I have never been addicted to alcohol, alcohol or drugs, thank God. I mean, I'm all making medication. It's a big difference. I have uh, a bipolar, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I take uh, uh, Depakote and Seroquel. Yes, I'm bipolar and I do take medication. But there's a lot of mental health problems within people that are homeless that is not being addressed. The people are not getting the medication they need. If it wasn't for uh, safety net, I wouldn't be able to get my medications. That would also place me as not only an endangerment to myself, but also to others. Because I only become suicidal, I become homicidal. Hey, yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. God bless you. And my you poem's too. on page nine, called Goodbye. Page mm -hmm. nine? Mm -hmm. It's called Goodbye Can this time. Nine? James Meeks. Mm -hmm. I've been off, off and on on the streets for 10 years, since uh, 2000. I've been in and out of halfway houses, rehabs, you name it, I've been there. She said so. Bill said as long as we're in Monday. Oh, we'll come in Monday and pay that I bill. We'll be in Monday. It's the next time the bus runs out there anyway. Yep. You can't get out there on the weekend. I pay my rent, pay my lights, got cable. I actually got a have computer. A, a computer that I'm paying on. <laughs> we're still a little bit behind, but we're, we're getting better. As you see, we don't have very much furniture. We have the basics, you know, somewhere to sit. It's a small, cozy apartment, not real huge, but it did works. It serves its purpose. We're both several, several steps ahead of where we started at. We're mm -hmm. both working towards a better life for ourselves. And a lot of that is because the contributor has given us an opportunity to, to make some money and have a life, to be able to pay bills and responsibilities. That's the and the contributor part. pays for our lovely computer. Yes, it does. <laughs> Okay, this is one of the camps, one of the tents floating right here. The people who lived in there got flooded out. And that was downtown. That was down there in the riverfront area. I stayed in Tent City for nine months camping, so straight. Through the winter and everything, it was, it was, 
insane, <laughs> but it was cool. It was an experience, unforgettable. Oh, Homestead, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where we stand now, we are within 100 feet of the Cumberland. So yeah. within, you know, within minutes, this area was overrun with water yeah. when that flood happened. This was considered the main area of Tent City. From here, all the way to the river, and all the way up underneath the underpass, was once all considered Tent City. You can imagine uh, down here at night, you got campfires going, you got people, you know, doing their thing, and you'd have camps scattered underneath these overpasses. They were done that way, keep the rain from off their heads, but also at night you get a pretty much white noise from the traffic above. Locks out enough noise to where you can sleep. I, I enjoyed Tent City until uh, I got stabbed 17 times <laughs> in my back while I was asleep. This was back in February. I was asleep by, uh, I had a campfire going and to tell you the truth, I was drunk and passed out like this right here in the chair. And some guy stabbed me 13 times across my back right through here and once in my neck right here. And then I fell out of the chair and he stabbed me twice in my leg. And uh, I woke up in Vanderbilt Trauma Center. So. You know what hurts you and doesn't kill you makes you stronger and you just, um, just keep on tugging along and you hope that one day you find happiness. And that's what, I mean, that's really where, you know, where I am today, so. I started to sell these papers basically to get out of the mission. So I went ahead and went through the orientation. And it wasn't, I'm thinking maybe a week or two. I had enough money that we got out and we moved into some um, paid by the week apartments over in Rivergate. Let, let, let's clarify this. What is really homelessness? Do you think living in a hotel is homeless? It is. It is. Legally speaking, it is. There's people in Tent City working, can't afford to get a place. There's people in the, in the mission working every day, can't afford to get out of mission. There's people in the shelters working every day, can't afford to get a place. Our rent now is $36 a day, but still, it adds up. It, it, it's 250 some odd dollars a week. If we paid by the week, it would be cheaper. We just can't make enough, to, to that one chunk, to go up and give them the 100, I think he told me, like 145 something like that a week to stay. I'm going to get a hotel. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to eat some real food. We got there at 2.45 and we left at 6. So that's 3 hours and 15 minutes. That's some good time for me. I'm hurting. I'm so afraid I'm going to get a DUI on this thing. I don't know what to do. Man, I ain't never had a DUI. I've been driving since I was 12. I ain't never had a DUI. I'm gonna get a DUI on this damn scooter. <laughs> I feel it. Pee Wee, where are you? I need to get a whistle. Some people tend to dwell on what they ain't got or where they're at, which ain't necessarily what's gonna get you ahead. What gets you ahead is setting a life goal. We says we're gonna sell at least 10 papers today. We're gonna stay out till we sell 10 papers. Now that don't sound like much, but back when it first started, people thought this was a gimmick. This was a game. Our first goal was cup of coffee. Second goal, change of clothes. Third goal, we wanted to stay in a room for a night. Then we wanted a room for a week. $180 a week. Being cold last night, I was determined to get a room tonight. Like I know. Like I said, man, and laying on that cardboard and that blanket, I had to double the blanket. And I tried to tuck it up under me like a sleeping bag. I'm going to have to give me a sleeping bag, I guess, for the next 40. One, two, three, four, five. 45 for the room. That leaves us a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars. Now, I'm going to tell the man at the hotel you're my boyfriend. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's tell you my boyfriend. One of my latest thoughts is that homelessness is a symptom. It's more of a, it's more of an adjective than a noun, or you know, I don't know. It's it's a symptom of many different things. I was in Marine Corps for thirty years. Uh, I lived my life well. I've owned several pieces of property over the years. I bought and sold cars. I've 
own my own business. You just hear all kinds of stuff from from abuse and from addiction and mental illness to man just from a tornado. You know, it, it's it's just a symptom of a lot of life experiences. We wound up on the streets because, well, we had no money. We owed hundreds of thousands of dollars in bills. Three years ago, I had, what, two major coronaries and my kidneys shut down. I had poisoning in my body. I was in a coma in the hospital. So the hospital, after I woke up, decided, well, we're going to cure this, and they put me in a cab to the mission so they didn't have to service us. And then the mission put me on a bus to Nashville because, oh, there's better places to get treated there. And before we knew it, we'd, we'd been shipped from mm -hmm. Illinois to Nashville. So sick, I couldn't talk, hardly walk. Couldn't walk. Our top 10 vendors, actually the top 12, uh, all have sold 600 or more papers. That means that all, all 12 of them are on pace to sell a thousand papers a month this month. We're still on record pace. We're doing great. Um, we've sold about 5,000 more papers this month at this point. Uh, and if we keep this pace up, we're, we're gonna blow the, we'll blow the gates off of it. We've printed more than enough copies for you to sell as many as you possibly can. Do not worry about a sellout. You can still try for one. We, I'd, I'd love it if you did. Uh, we, we, um, but, but I'd like to break 70,000 this month. Um, we sold 47,000 last month. And 70,000 is a reachable goal for us. We've got Nashville all, all abuzz with the contributor. Uh, I see it for sale everywhere. Um, and I see people getting further and further out, which is really good. As, as everybody knows, there's a vendor in every corner downtown. Um, and there's a lot of space out in, that, in Nashville to sell a lot of papers. And Anthony, you've been selling a lot of papers. You're number six on our list, so, you know. And you don't sell downtown, do you? Nope, he doesn't. Okay. All right, I need to know names of exactly who is giving papers away to non-vendors. This train will come off the tracks if you sell papers to other vendors. This train will come off the tracks if non-vendors and suspended vendors cause enough problems for us. We've got about 300 vendors a month right now and there's two and a half of us. And we definitely have some people out there who don't abide by the rules. Uh, he was deleted. But then he needs to go back through training again. Yeah. Um, it, it's, been, uh, it's been more than two months since we've seen you. Um, so we well, need to... I've been buying papers. I've been sending money in through other people. Then, papers. Then, then you don't understand the rules because that's, that's, that's a strike. Uh, 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 I, you have to go through training again. So I'll get you more papers? No, not until... Not until uh, in fact, I need to take this until, uh, until you um, go back through training on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're not selling for us right now. It's been two months since you trained. You haven't, you haven't been selling at all. You haven't been buying at all. Uh, I don't have any confidence that you know what, what it is you're supposed to be doing. And it sounds like you told me that you don't know what you're doing because you're, you're already breaking the rules by buying them from other people. Who's been buying papers for you? I got, I got three or four different friends. Well, I need to know who they are. When they come in, I get Well, when, when you come and tell me who the three or four different friends are, I'll train you again. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm a pessimist, but I would say 80%, probably more, of what we get is positive. We get people saying, I'd never talked to a homeless person before. We got a reaction from someone, again from a McDonald's, saying, I don't want to have to look at those people when I buy my breakfast. Um, and that's a really interesting reaction to me. I'm surprised, I'm surprised someone's gonna let themselves say that. I, I laugh at some people. They think they gotta dress like a bum to sell this paper. So last August, I wore this suit and tie downtown and I sold 640 papers doing it to prove a point. I told people, I said, the people of this town, there's a lot of good people and they want to support you. And I even said it in a vendor meeting. I said, but they want to know, hey, I'm not throwing away my money. what I do, buy that guy 40? Why ain't he changed clothes in a week? Where's he going? Why is he still in Tent City? I've gotten multiple calls from people who say, I like what you're doing but I saw one of your vendors smoking cigarettes. What are they doing with that money? A lot of people don't smoke while they're selling. I do, my customers don't mind. I've gotten so many opinions and, and um, really nothing negative, so 
I think when you're when you're living on the streets when you have nothing, that's a physical addiction. It's one of the very few comforts comforts you have. So I don't judge anybody at all for smoking cigarettes. And if you can afford better cigarettes that are already rolled for you, then by all means. Um, that's what we're here for. If, if what you need the paper for is cigarette money. I've got multiple calls about people saying, I saw one of your vendors talking on a cell phone. When someone is working on getting their way up off the streets, one of the very first things they need is a cell phone. I told you I took it the first time. Right. And I told y'all I failed. Right. They got my social security number mixed up with another girl who failed, and I passed the first time. Look at that. I start October the 4th. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm going for medical assistant. This paper is really changing our lives. It's allowing us to pay our bills, or go back to school. After she finishes, I'm looking back, going back to school. If you want to get housing, if you want, if you have a court date, if you want to call the contributor, if you want to talk to your family, or if you need help, or if you're waiting on any kind of job or apartment, if you're waiting on housing, that cell phone is your lifeline. I just actually got great news because um, uh, Bank of Nashville wouldn't let me open uh, an account because I didn't have a permanent address because I'm staying in a uh, motel. And uh, my premarital counselor, he's a reverend, uh, uh, Dave George, told me that he'd open an account for me, um, and you know it'd be my account with our, with, with my, my uh, wife's name on it, but like it'd just be under his name so that we could open it, you know. And um, I just explained that to Bank of Nashville, and they said that they're going to go ahead and let me open it without an address. Our vendors have been able to educate Nashville about homelessness and poverty, where you think. You might think a homeless person has nothing, and some people do, but as you're working your way up, you accumulate some comforts like cigarettes and some necessities like cell phones. One thing about homelessness is that you want to escape. You don't want to have to deal with the reality of that you're homeless and that nobody cares and that you're just another number to the system. And most people feel that way. They're just another number. The homeless are the forgotten ones. But there's a percentage of the homeless that want to make an actual living to go out and sell the paper and, and do it. Huh? Are you American citizen? Yeah, me. Okay, why you to work? Well, I see that every day. We get it every day. We get people to drive by us and say, get a real job. But they don't realize this is a real job. This is like any other job. You're going to get into it what you put into it. A lot of people will be out here stealing and, you know, robbing for money if they went and doing something else. Keeps people from doing stupid things. I used to be homeless. Past tense. Okay. Past I was tense. homeless. <laughs> I was homeless for That's six years. Good, okay. Six years. But I'm not homeless anymore. I live in a house now. Really? Yeah. Have a job. Have a job. Yep. That's my job. This is what I do for a living. First thing in the morning, up at four o'clock, hitting that bus by. By 5.30, catch the 6.15 out of downtown, by 15 till 7, I'm on my spot. Well, you could, I catch Six days at, a week. I catch a bus at 5.11. I'm in town at 5.30. It's a legitimate job. It's a real job. You it's probably not a job to you. You probably people. say, no, you it's just, not a real you just job. Using the, people, the people just This is a real job. On, give your money. They have a job. It's a legitimate micro business. It's their business. Nobody tells them what hours to work. Nobody tells them where to go. Nobody tells them when to quit. They make as much or as little money as they want. So what's bad about it? I think it's a great paper. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's what I was talking to Chris, uh, Chris about the other day when we was in front of the office over there is that, uh, you know, it's a hit or miss, you know, and, 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 and you get experience by inexperience. You know what I mean? So. You can work. Why do you ask people? You can work and... I draw disability. My wife and I were both disabled. You're disabled with what? Your brain? No, no, you are joking. My brother, my brother can't hear. My brother can't hear and he's, he works now. He works now? Yeah, he, he's a teacher. He's a what? He's teacher? A teacher, yes. Wow. I pray to God that that homelessness will be taken and squashed in this country. We supply more food overseas and more monies overseas and, and all these troops overseas, but yet we're not taking care of what's here at home. What we hear in the news that America is rich. Uh, my father are very poor. But very I, poor? Yeah, very poor, but I want to learn. I want to study. And I don't want you to- You want a job? I want a job, yeah. If you go to Vanderbilt University, man, you can get a real good job. Yeah, because I study. I spent my time studying. Do you know this guy, how, how he gets per day? 150 per day, one day. 
Why? Because he studied, he worked hard, he didn't stay in the street and ask people for money. I'm, I'm 66, this is what I learned. We all depend on somebody for something. You depend on your boss to get enough work so you can work tomorrow. And homelessness is only a paycheck. And you're one paycheck from finding out. I'm the typical homeless person. I'm not the stereotypical, but I am the typical. You know, what they, what they do is they, tr they misportray us as people, as, as a bunch of addicts, alcoholics, and mentally ill. Yes, there are homeless people who are addicts and alcoholics and mentally ill, and there's people with houses that are. And it's not like there's more homeless people with those issues than there are people with houses. There's not. We're just like everybody else, and people don't. That's my, my main message that I get out. I put different spins on it, and I say it in different ways and use different angles, but that is my message, and that's what I get out by, by writing for the paper and selling the paper. You'll be at 300 at the end of the month, but you got to do that before next Tuesday. No problem. Is it good to give him 40? I did, I did that with. Okay. I, I'm, you're getting 20? Shake the hand. All right. That gives me about 300 this month, okay? That gives you the 300? Yeah, that gives me my 300. Have you applied for your spot? No. Let me make sure I, I get your name right. David Klein. Yes. Okay. Does anybody have that spot uh, by Kroger? Walgreens Come on over here. Let's take a look. The satellite view. Yeah, Walgreens is right there. Kroger's right here. Okay, yeah. No, I'm not going to work today. Not a paper. Unless you want to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> we met each other and like it was just like instant connection. I think our pain through life draws us closer together. Yes, I do too. <laughs> we went and took a walk last night to the very spot that we're getting married and laid underneath the stars for about an hour just talking and just enjoying it's, each other. Like it's our spot now. It's our square <laughs> in the middle of the amphitheater. And, you know, we just, it was dark and all the amphitheater lights were on. And oh, it was, it was just, beautiful. It was a nice clear sky. And we were sitting there laughing and just having our moment and bells started ringing and playing music and it was like really cool. <laughs> We're excited. We can't wait. I love her and I know that she loves me. Welcome stranger. Broken and hungry. Won't you stay for a while? I got a friendly invitation. We have a lot of friends here and people that love you deeply, but the most cherished guest here today is the Lord Jesus Christ. As you come before him to take your vows and to pledge today before your friends that this is God's plan for your life, that God has brought the two of you together. We're talking a lot about love, so I just want to talk a little more about it. And like we uh, was asked the question, what, what, love, what was love to us, you know? And to me, love is taking responsibility and appreciation of the unknown and knowing, to, to just be able to share with you parts of my life that I've not been able to share with anybody else. And to appreciate every moment that I can endure with you from now until forever. So I want you to know that I love you, appreciate you, and want you in my life every day for the rest of mine. I love you, sweetheart. I, Jason, take you, Melissa, to be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Do you take Jason to be your wedded husband and to live together in the covenant of faith, hope, and love according to God's intention for your life? And do you promise to be honest with him and openly communicate with him, to listen to his innermost thoughts and be patient, understanding, and forgiving for him? And finally, do you promise to stand by him and comfort and encourage him regardless of the circumstances, preferring him above all others, and to build a home strong in the knowledge and example of Jesus Christ as long as you both shall live. I do. 
Jason and Melissa, it's in the presence of our Lord and by the authority granted to me by his church that I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride. Well, friends, let me introduce to you for the very first time anywhere ever, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jason Howard. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Tom says we're going to hit 66,000 today. Um, so that's huge. I think last month, 47.5. And this month had an extra week, so of course it was going to be a little more, but 66 is quite a bit more. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> I do know last June um, we hit 5,000. We were really excited that month. We, you know, 5,000 circulation, that was huge for us. We thought that was our leveling point. And then to this month to have circulated 66,000 just a little over a year later, it just blows our mind. Um, as well as other things, you know, I mean, it's just, it kind of, it's, it's good, but we have grown past our capacity. Hello, <laughs> visitors of the contributor. <laughs> Welcome to the wild world of vending. We trained 30 extra uh, v uh, vendors yesterday, um, so uh, we are glad you're here. If you... If you trained this month, if you went through training this month, could you please stand up? All right. We've got a, all right. That's not a small number. We have grown. We now have 312 active vendors. And about half of you are going to be on this list. The list is different this week. So if you're looking to get that, per that, that permanent spot, and your name is on the front of the list, you did it. Congratulations. Last week, we had sold 56,077 papers. Now, we have sold 66,142 papers. Wow. We, are, we are doing great. Um, the average number of papers sold per vendor is 212. That's about $400 of profit, a little less than $400 of profit at an average in your pockets. You are out there with a brand. That brand is what makes you money. And when that brand gets thrown around and, and, and dirtied, it hurts you. The reason our numbers keep going up is because you do a good job. You do a great job. Corey Paul is our number one vendor. Uh, <laughs> He sold 17, uh, 1,710 papers uh, this month. Oh. May I present Mr. and Mrs. Jason Howard? Uh, <laughs> you know Jason's in love if he, if he sacrifices his number one sales position uh, 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 for it. So, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> every month we've been growing by a factor of about 20%. You guys are doing great. We're on pace to sell over 500,000 papers this year. And, um, and that is a remarkable feat in saying that we just sold over 50,000, a little bit, over 50,000 last year. Um, that's a tenfold increase. People are out there talking to us about the, pa the paper, and it's almost always, your vendors are always so well-dressed, they're always so polite, they're always so hardworking. Always dress up when you vend. Never dress down. If you can dress up, dress up. People l want to support successes. And your successes. I'm going to do a group photo outside on the front steps. So let me get out there. And then Tom is going to hand out the numbers. I think I can pretty much get the whole thing. So spread out just a little. And I'll try not to get hit by a car. Here we go. Okay, one, two, three. I think we're good. Thank you, guys.
the contributor sold out of the November issue, achieving the largest single month circulation in the country by moving 75,000 copies. I don't think we're the best street paper. I don't. I mean, we're working on our content. I don't think our content's the best. I don't think, I don't think we have the best staff of of any other any other paper. So I don't know why our circulation is so high. The many customers are compelled by homeless people helping themselves instead of asking for a handout. One in four vendors selling for a month or more now has a place to live. The salesmen collectively will make close to a million dollars this year. She's perfect for you.